today's video I will be showing you how to make some really amazing arm sleeves. These arm sleeves do have lining. Here is a small clip of how to measure everything you need to make the pattern for the arm sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, quickly want to show you how to measure for arm sleeves. Number one, the top of the arm just before the armpit. Number two, the length of your arm. For number three, you will need a glove, depending on how long you want it, either the wrist around the glove or just before. And finally, the measurement between each sleeve. Okay, now that we have every uh, information we need, let's make the pattern piece. Now for this, you're going to need a pen, uh, ruler, where's my ruler? Mine's a two-in-one ruler and it's a omni-grip ruler uh, if you want to get one for yourself. It is made in the USA so I'm sure they'll stock it there even though I'm in the UK. But this special ruler has all of these <laughs> very confusing lines. However, the lines that I mostly use are the lines going downwards here these ones here and the dots because the dots going this way will give you a quarter of an inch half an inch three quarters and then obviously each line is an inch so I really find this useful for straight edge seam allowance um, and that's what we're gonna be using it for so yes if you don't have one of these you can make something or you can use a seam gauge but yeah so <laughs> I'm going to be using this ruler obviously as a ruler and then as the ruler to add seam gauge. I have my information. So the top of the arm is this bit around here. Then you have the wrist which is obviously the wrist. This is the um, measurement of the wrist with the pole on because that's what my client would like. Uh, but obviously you can either have it valve pause or um, just before the pour rather than on the pour which I did show in the clip just before if you watched it <laughs> um, and then obviously you're going to need some paper and paper scissors now I say paper scissors because you don't want to use fabric scissors unless you want to blunt them and have to get new ones every single time so yes use that uh, paper scissors when cutting paper now paper you can easily just stick paper together newspaper together as long as when you draw on it you can see the pen nicely uh, so I'm just gonna use newspaper because I have it on hand and it does the same job you may also need a meter ruler just to connect the two pieces together but for the patterning what I've done is I've gotten some paper I've folded it in half and I'm going to be using half the pattern and using the folded edge as a guide if that makes sense uh, I would recommend doing this it this way it just makes it a whole lot easier so the first thing I've done is I've drawn the line of the top of the arm so this is the length of the top of the arm but the measurements have been halved because obviously once we unfold the paper after cutting it it's going to be doubled so you want to make sure you've halved it I've marked down 18 inches for the length of the arm. This does not need to be half because the paper is not folded this way. It's folded that way, lengthways. Yeah, so you still want the length to be the same size. Now the wrist part you want to half and I, from the 18th mark where the length uh, ends, I've drawn a straight line of half the size of the wrist. Now we're going to connect them. Now depending on the size of your ruler you may have to do this multiple times but I have a meter ruler so I'm just going to use it to my advantage as best as I can. Um, so I'm just going to mark where the wrist piece ends and the same with the top of the arm piece as well. going up at a diagonal so this is the arm piece 
Before you cut this out, I would recommend adding seam allowance along the edge here that we've made. So here you can see the seam allowance at both ends. So I'm just going to cut this out including the seam allowance in the piece. Okay, so now we have the pattern, you can unfold it. This is the full pattern piece and this should go around your customer's arm when put together. And it should be a nice snug fit. Sadly, I lost the footage of me sorting out the lining and getting it up together but what I did I folded the um, lining fabric in half and then put the pattern on drew around it in fabric marker and then I cut both sides of the fabric out so this way that when you take it apart you ended up with uh, both arm sleeves together you can do this separately if it's easier or your fabric's a little wonky shape together we just sew along one edge and now we have arm sleeves this is a stretchy material so i've used um a zigzag stitch to stitch it together because otherwise if i use a straight stitch and someone wants to pull on it pull on the fabric or put it on your arm which is what you're going to do then with the straight stitch it would snap So yes, I've done this with both sides, so we have two arm sleeves um, lining pieces. Now we can actually go ahead and put these to the side because now we're going to move on to the actual fabric itself. So obviously you're going to need your pattern, you're also going to need some fabric scissors. I'm using my big ones even though they're quite blunt, I just don't know where my small ones are. Small ones are highly recommended because the way you cut fur is in tiny snips and um, against the backing so you don't chop the fur and make it look all choppy. <laughs> um, however, I'm just going to have to stick with these, but yeah, I would recommend small scissors, especially for beginners. You're also going to need some fabric markers. You may need some chalk depending on the colour of your fabric. If it has a black backing, I recommend white chalk. Um, and if, you're, if you feel like your chalk isn't working, sometimes you need to give it um, a couple of scrapes just because it's got a kind of waxy-ish seal around it. Um, so you kind of need to rub that off before it really starts to work and actually show. And then I have some metal washers uh, to use as pattern weights. Uh, yeah, because pattern weights are expensive. Yes, you're gonna need uh, some fake fur, depending on the size of the uh, arm sleeves, and uh, depends on the size of the fabric. Okay. When you're doing the fur, make sure you look at the fur direction. I like to have the fur direction facing to me every single time. By the way, the fur I'm using is from Mohair Bear Making Supplies and it's shade Flamingo. However, this is ending soon, so you might want to run in quick. <laughs> Remember, you want the fur direction to be going down your wrist. Now, you can mark this on your pattern piece to remember, uh, but I don't need to, so. <laughs> So I haven't added seam allowance because we already added it onto the pattern piece um, and you also don't need to flip it because this pattern should be uh, perfectly even. Um, so do this uh, again.
So now that we have our arm sleeves cut out completely, we can now start sewing them together. So you want them right sides together, the right side is the fabric you want to see on the outside. So the fur inside in our case, unless you want the backing on the outside but that's certainly up to you. <laughs> and then we're just going to pin or clip these together, I prefer clips because they're just easier if I'm honest. Side, and then we can just put them both in the sewing machine straight after each other. Now when you sew this you want to sew in the direction of the fur instead of backwards it just makes it easier when brushing the fur out and it stops it from getting all oddly shaped basically. So I'm sewing down the arm from the top to the rest. Okay, now that these two have been sewn, I'm just going to turn them the right way around and give them a brush along the seam just to brush out any furs that may have gotten trapped. Okay, now that we have our arm sleeves done and brushed, grab your lining. Now you want to keep your lining inside out and you want to keep your fur the right side round. Now I don't really know what, how to explain why you should do this, um, except it's going to give you a neater finish at the end, so just, just go with the flow here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to put my arm through the lining. I'm going through the small part first, so the part around the wrist. And then I'm going to go from the small part of the uh, lining, uh, the arm sleeve even. I'm going to pull the lining all the way through until we reach the top. Now, obviously, because my lining is a stretchy material, it will be stretched to reach both ends correctly. Um, but for now, we're just going to focus on the end of the rest. So what I'm going to do is pull down the lining, just a tad. Now, you want to try and match the seams just to make it um, neater. So I'm just going to swivel the lining around a tad. So it can match the seams on both ends. I'm going to be clipping the wrist seams together, so the lining and the arm sleeve itself, and making sure to tuck in the fur. I'm just going to go round, tucking in the fur. Now do this on the other arm sleeve and then we're going to sew these together. Now that the ends are clipped together, we're just going to sew the wrist, don't clip the other end just yet. Okay, so I'm really quickly just going to turn it all back the other way and I'm going to give the fur a brush and try and pull in as much as I can.
can't see the ground Can we stop this gravity? Okay, so now we can pull this in from the inside by wearing the arm sleeve and trying to get the end. And we're gonna pull this all the way through to the other side. Line up the seams. Then we're gonna clip. All the way around and we're gonna do this on both sides okay now that we have the whole part pinned for the top of the arm we are just gonna put these to the side and grab our elastic so the elastic I'm using is one and a half inches but one inch might be better I just find this one feels a little bit more nicer on the back just because it covers more of an area and it's like less likely to dig in because it's so small so I'm gonna be using a one and a half inch elastic then obviously you want it the um, length of the back measurement so mine is 35 inches so here is the back elastic now if the end frays like this just give it a quick trim and then What you can always do is get a lighter to the end and then try and push it down just to stop it fraying. So now we're going to get our arms and you want to place them so both top parts are together like this and now we're just going to get our elastic. You want one end, you want it kind of going down the arm. I'm going to go with opposite the seam Then we're going to do the same on the other side So we need it kind of going like this now we're going to sew the elastic on, not around the arm, we're just going to sew across the elastic. Now I would go back and forth a couple of times and then I'll go down a little and then back and forth and then back up and then maybe do a cross in the middle just to keep it there as sturdy as possible. Okay, now that they have been just kind of roughly sewn together, um, we can now start making some bias binding. It's extremely easy to do, all you need is some just plain black fabric or whatever colour you want. You can use the same colour as you did for the uh, lining. However, because it's a stretching material, I'm not going to. I would recommend either cottons or uh, fabric fleece, that kind of stuff. So. It's extremely easy to do. All you need is your fabric, a ruler, some chalk in my case because obviously I'm using black fabric, and some scissors to cut it out. Okay, so I'm going to start off by just creating a basic line. The top of the arm is uh, 17 inches, so let's say 18 to go all the way around and then we need to double that okay so now I'm using the top part of the ruler uh, just to keep it straight and then I'm gonna mark down three on each end there we go and then I'm gonna go down two and a half inches just because I can fold it underneath anyway if it's too large but it allows for a lot of room is I'm gonna from the end of the line we've just made I'm going to use it as a guide to make a straight line underneath we're basically creating a rectangle Now 
and we have ourselves a really long rectangle we can use this to cut it out And now we have our bias binding. Now I know it's nothing fancy and it doesn't have the folds in it, but that's why we do the folding ourselves. Okay, so I have the long strip, so I'm just gonna fold it and then cut it. Now we need our arm sleeves. If your fabric has one side where it has a pattern and the other side doesn't, you want to put the pattern side against it because then we're going to, once it's sewn on, fold it up which will create a nice neat kind of uh, hidden seam if that makes sense and then we're gonna fold it in and down and then sew it um, but the, you want to make sure it, the nice side of the fabric their right sides together um, otherwise you'll have the backwards on the outside I'm going to start where the elastic is and I'm just going to place a clip keep it in place then I'm going all the way around picking up the clips and then putting them back down it's just easier to do it this way you can trim this down I'm just gonna clip it and first and I'm going to have it overlap slightly just to make sure that it does go all the way around and then I'm going to give it a trim. Okay, now we're going to sew all these layers together all the way around and then we'll flip it up, fold it in, sew it again but I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. Let's sew it. Okay, so now that we have done the main part of the sewing, of the lining, we can fold it over and as you can see we now have a seamless edge which is the effect we were going for. Um, you want to basically fold it up and give it a brush because you don't want any of these hairs getting trapped. Now we're going to fold it almost in half. Then you want to fold it all the way down. So, like that. Uh, you just want to fold it down um, so it curves over everything that's in there and it will stop once it's gotten there. But remember to fold the top bit first and then fold it down. Now we're going to want to sew this bit down and you kind of want to sew it uh, close-ish to the edge but not too close. Voila. It looks super cute. Nice inside, a nice outside, and super soft. You don't have to put bias binding on the bottom sleeve um, because, I mean, it's pretty hidden by the fur anyway. So it's completely up to you. But if you do, remember to try and untuck the fur. 
but I think I might just leave it with the top parts done and the bottom parts undone because well because of the way that we've done the lining at the bottom already it's a seamless edge anyway so I'm just gonna leave it so these are your arm sleeves done I hope you guys enjoyed this fluffy video and it was helpful for you guys if you did like it don't forget to like subscribe and well I guess I'll see you guys next time bye Mwah.